Hello everyone and welcome back to Everything Tech and today we are installing Windows 10 using Parallels. So if you've seen any of my previous videos regarding Windows and installing Windows using Parallels, you should be familiar with this screen here. But if this is the first video you see regarding installing Windows, using Parallels and you are not familiar with what you see here, basically we have two options. You either migrate from Windows, Windows from a PC, basically you create an image file from your Windows PC and you bring it here. We're not going to be dealing with this one. Or you can install Windows using a DVD image file or a bootable USB drive. We're going to be selecting this feature and we're not really going to cover what down what's down here because we're not here for this. We're here for installing Windows 10. And upon clicking this, we should see the Find Automatically window. This is a window you originally see. And I just wanted to test out if my um, ISO file worked. So, if you do find yourself here in the Automatic window, or the pane, you should see your Windows 10 ISO file, or Windows 7, or Windows 8.1. Here you can select it and continue. But if you do not see it, you can click on Locate Manually. And if you're using a DVD, just put your DVD inside your DVD drive and it should start reading it and it should come up here. If you have an image file, like you see here, I already dropped it in, but you would drop it in and that's the picture you see. Drag this image file here or right click to select the file. So you drop it there and you can see it's Windows 10. You can also right click and click open file and you should see all of your your, or you should be able to navigate your computer, but I don't want to navigate my computer now because I have my ISO file at hand. If you also have a bootable USB drive, you just click here, the USB drive, and connect a bootable USB drive to the Mac, and it should be able to read it, but we're using an image file, so this is the feature I'm going to use. Next, we hit continue. If you're going to use the automatic, just click and click continue, and as long as you're here, you're still on pace. Next, we're going to uncheck this version requires a product key so you don't steal my product key and so no one else takes it. You never know, someone might be logging all of your product keys through this feature here. Uncheck Express Installation. What this does is it, it enables you to go through a full installation of Windows, meaning it'll let you select the name of your computer, go through personalization and other features which aren't you really don't go through if you click express installation. It'll just go through quickly. Parallels will select the features for you and even give, give the computer a name. And it's quicker, but not the best. So we're going to click continue after unchecking. Here we have several options. We have five options to choose from. And whichever one you see fit based on what you're going to be using this operating system for, you can select it. Usually the best one's for games because it gives you the maximum performance possible with your computer. So that's the one I'm going to be checking. And let me click continue. Here we name our machine. We can name it Windows 10 or Gaming Windows or whatever you want to call it. If you have multiple users on your computer, you can check here if you want to share this image file with other users on the computer. So if you have Parallels installed on your computer and you're able to access it on all of your user accounts, you can also share this image file that Parallels creates so you can open the Parallels image in another user. I don't have any other users, this is my sister's computer and I'm not going to be sharing it with anybody else because there's no other users. But if you were to click this, you can see here users shared Parallels and you'll be able to access it from any other account on the same machine. I don't know what this does. I haven't really looked into what it does, so I'm not going to check it. But customize settings before installation. I always check this always to double check that the features that I'm that I want are there. And also I use it to remove several features that I don't want. So we click continue and since we checked Express Installation, we get this little pop-up window here that allows us to change several settings. So we're going to move this to the side, just so I can see what my features are here in Windows 10. So we see Windows 10, 2 CPU cores, 4 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. That's fine, I like those settings, but I'm going to change how much storage the machine has. 
Here in the first tab, you can rename the computer and you can even give it a description if you want. If you want to reconfigure the computer for a different style, another option maybe, this is where you can do it too. All you have to do is click on change where you see configure for and I can change it to let's say productivity, click OK and of course our settings will go down based on which settings we choose. So I'm going to keep it at games. I remember in previous versions of Parallels you were, they didn't have this games only type thing. You had to set, select your own settings, although you still can. Next tab we have options and these are all about personal preference. If you want to change any of these features here you can do so. Optimization, faster virtual machine. I keep it that way because of course if I'm using my virtual machine I'm not using my Mac and I want to use a virtual machine. I don't touch any of this stuff because again if you don't know what it is don't touch it. Power, better performance. This is only if you're on battery power because I'm not on battery power I don't need to worry about longer battery life so I keep it at better performance. Free disk space, real-time virtual disk optimization. I don't check that. I don't know what it does. I don't want to learn what it does because it might do something that ruins the experience. Sharing. Share Mac home folder only. Keep it that way if you're going to want to use Parallels shared folders. I'm not going to share my iCloud folder with Windows and I'm not going to map Mac volumes to Windows. Share Windows, click on here, access Windows folders from Mac. This is probably one of the most annoying features. It allows you to access folders on the Windows machine through your Mac. So you, your Mac gets cluttered with all of this stuff from Windows 10. Usually when I set up something like this, I like to have access, well not really have access to Windows on my Mac because I like to have them both secluded. If I want to print something from Windows 10, I can do so by entering Windows 10. But you can check this if you want. And we move along to applications and another annoying feature. Share Windows applications with a Mac. What this does is share Windows applications with your Mac. So every time you open, for example, Internet Explorer, down on your dock you will see the Internet Explorer logo there. You're able to quit Internet Explorer through there. Mac, um, not really Mac, uh, Windows applications will show up on your launch pad so that gets really annoying because I like to keep my launch pad nice and neat and Windows comes here with all their applications and starts spilling them all over my launch pad so I don't want that so I uncheck it. Show Windows notification area in the Mac menu bar. I also uncheck this because it starts throwing these notifications at me for example if the Windows is updating it's like Windows installed updates and it starts bothering me so I don't really want to see that so I uncheck it and all this stuff is unchecked, I'll leave it that way. Full screen. Use OS X full screen. Checking this will open a new full screen window and move to its own separate window so you can always swipe to and from the Windows machine. If you don't do this, it'll just full screen in the window you're looking at and you won't be able to work comfortably, so I use that. Active screen corners, basically you can select what each corner does. So if I select exit full screen, every time I go up to the right or left hand corner, top left hand corner, the Windows machine will exit full screen. So I just activate active screen corners and just put that little negative there so none of the corners are active. I keep the scale to fit screen on auto because of course it's smart enough to detect my aspect ratio and it should do it on its own. If it doesn't, you can always change it, it's really easy. Moving along to modality, I don't move this here because of course I can't see live, live effects. So basically if I move this to translucent or opaque, I can't see what it really does so I don't move, move it for anything. And this I don't mess with. Time, sync from OS X. You may want to do this because of course if the time is off in your Windows machine it's going to be off here on your Mac. You don't want that to happen. This sync from OS X is what I usually keep it at. Copy and paste, share Mac clipboard, and preserve text formatting. I usually leave this this way, you never know. And also this stuff here. My computer does not support Apple Remote, but if yours does you can leave this enabled if you're going to use it, but because my computer does not support it, I'm just going to uncheck it. And no, I don't want my Windows computer to access my Mac's current location. I'm not going to be using any maps or anything. It's mainly for games. So none of that stuff really needs to access my location, so I'll uncheck it. Moving along to hardware. 
This is a fun part, because here you can select how many CPU cores your computer has, along with how much memory. So it gives it two by default, but I like to select four. And for memory, four gigabytes says that it's the ideal. If you go any more, this is the message you get. Are you sure you want to change the amount of memory available to the guest OS? For best performance, set available memory to be within the recommended range of 512 megs to 4,096 4 megabytes. Allocating memory outside of this range can slow down both the guest OS and your Mac. So if that scares you, don't change it, keep it at 4. 4 should be enough for the majority of things, but don't expect to run the latest games in 4K because it won't really happen boot order you don't need to get into that graphics I give it a 1024 megabytes which is a gigabyte of graphics memory that's enough for what I use it for but you can keep it at 512 or give it more or less whichever amount you want mouse and keyboard optimized for games of course because I did select games but you can also auto detect for games or don't optimize for games Keyboard optimize or don't optimize, it's either or. I keep it at optimize. Shared printers, if you're not going to be printing from this Windows machine, don't select this because it just bothers. It's it's pretty annoying because it installs all these drivers for your printer. You're not really going to use it, so it's going to take up space. But if you are going to be printing, you do select this and you can print from your Windows machine. So because I'm not going to be printing, I'm going to keep that unchecked. Network, shared network, basically it lets you allow, it allows you to get connected through your Mac, so it gets the internet connection through whatever your Mac is getting. And sound, I leave that at that. USB and Bluetooth, share Mac karma with Windows. I'm not going to be Skyping or FaceTiming or anything, so I'm not going to enable that. But if you are going to be using your camera, of course there are camera webcam features in Windows 10, you can leave that checked if you want, but I'm not going to do it. Hard disk. This is the option you use in order to select how much memory you have or how much memory you want to give to your virtual machine. It's not really going to take up this amount of space. It's only going to give it this much virtual memory. And we can select a numerical value or we can scroll. So I'm going to give this 512 gigabytes. That should be enough for what I'm going to use it for. So we click apply and it, and it says that it's highly recommended to make a backup. But again, there's really nothing to back up because we haven't even started the installation. So we click continue. If you get any error messages here, just click OK or whatever and get out and make sure here in expanding disk 512 gigabytes is displayed. If not, you may want to go back and redo it. CD and DVD, I'm not really going to touch this. We're just going to skim through the next three tabs because they're really not that important. Let's see if you want to require a password to do any of this stuff. Or if you want to isolate Windows from Mac. Backup and if you want to enable Smart Guard or backup through Time Machine or business features. Of course, this is personal use, so I'm not really going to be worried about business features. We close that window and we see here Windows 10, 4 cores, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage. We confirm that everything we have here is what we want. If you feel like you forgot something, you can always click on configure and go back and check. Now we click continue and it should open a separate window. This is what I mean by, by it opens a new window and it full screens. So you can see here it went in full screen mode, but I can always swipe back and go back to Mac. You can't do this if you don't select that that Windows feature I told you. The auto full screen feature. I'm not rem I don't remember what it's called. Anyway, we'll be back once everything starts. And we're back. That was fairly quick. Windows setup. If you were with me for Windows 8, this should be familiar to you. So we are going to select our language. Again, you can select your language based on whatever your ISO file or DVD offers. So you can only change your currency and time format based on other parts of the world, but your language is whatever you used or whatever you downloaded. Also your keyboarding input, you can select any other keyboarding inputs you want to use. I'm going to keep it at English, United States for both language to install, time and currency format, and the keyboard or input method. Next, and we install. 
Of course, like I said, this method will work if you want to clean install Windows 10 on your machine. This is the same process. And here we're going to enter our product key to activate Windows. I'm not going to do this. So we're going to click on skip. And the ISO file I downloaded directly from Windows, and I'll leave a link down in the description to where you can actually get that ISO file, comes with both Pro and Home version 64-bit. Depending on which product key you have, you may want to pick Home or Pro. Do not pick Home if you have Pro or if you have Pro. Don't, if you have Home, don't pick Pro. It's kind of confusing, but basically do not pick Pro if you have a Home product key. It's not going to work. You're just going to waste your time. I have a Pro because, of course, I have three different copies of Windows 7 Professional 64-bit and one other copy of Windows 8.1 64-bit Professional, so I can pick Pro. Next, we click Next, and it's going to install Windows 10 Pro. And here is our licensing agreement. I did forget to, or not really forget, but I accidentally deleted the software licensing terms from the Windows 8.1 video. So I just noticed that while watching the video this morning, but it should be the same. Just read the terms and conditions to make sure you're not signing away any, any of your rights. Once you agree to the terms and conditions, click on accept, click next, and here we get two options, upgrade or custom. We're going to go for custom, but I want to explain to you what upgrade does. Upgrade, if, if you're running, let's say Windows 8.1, Windows 7, or Vista, and you want to keep all your files, your settings, your applications, and everything, you want to upgrade. That wipes Windows 7, Vista, whatever operating system you have, installs Windows 10, and it keeps your applications, your files, your settings, all the folders in the exact same place where you left them. And I don't really like this option because it gets everything from Windows 7 and puts it in a folder that it's called Windows.old, and that just takes up hard drive space. Usually when I install my operating system all over again, I usually do it through custom, which allows you to select the hard drives that you have and create new partitions and format them and do all this crazy stuff. So here we can see the 512 gigs that we made earlier. We're going to click new because this is a new hard drive. If you're using doing this on a brand new custom built computer, you're going to see this too. You want to click on new. It's going to give you the maximum partition of 524. That way, when we we're done formatting this, it's going to be at a 511 megs or 511 gigabytes. It might be less because Windows 10 gives you a 500 megabyte partition or system reserve now. So that's a lot. Just to give you an, just just to like, just for comparison, Windows 7 had a 100 megabyte system reserve. Windows 8.1 had a 350. This one has a 500. Probably the next version of Windows is going to have a 1 gigabyte system reserve. Anyway, here's our main partition. We can click here. It's going to say Windows can't be installed, of course, because it's only 500 megs. So we're going to click on our drive partition number two. If you're going to be clean installing, you should see these two here. You can click on delete. And this is going to format your drive. And you can also click on here, delete. And you get your 512 gigabytes back. And then here you can create a new partition and clean install your operating system. It's always good to do this because it gives you a fresh computer. Anyway, once we have done our partition, you should see drive zero, partition two, 500 gigs or whatever storage you want to give your computer. You don't necessarily have to give it 500 gigs. You can give it a terabyte if you want. But just as long as this is formatted and you see your system reserve, we're good to go. Click on Partition 2, click Next. And now for the lengthiest process, it starts installing. So we're going to come back once the installation is complete because I don't want to have you guys sitting here. Go out there and do something. Go for a walk, go take pictures, take a shower, watch TV show. Just don't be here for too long because this does take very long. So I'll see you all back here once we personalize the computer. Alrighty, so we are back and after a few restarts, you should be able to see this. It's time to enter the product key window. Of course, again, you can also do this later if you don't want to do so now. You can punch it in if you want. I'm only skipping this for the protection of my own product keys, so I'll do this later. 
Get going fast, change these settings at any time. Use Express Settings 2, do the following. You can pause the video and read if you want. I'll use Express Settings because of course I know Windows knows what they're doing. Anyway, we're gonna let the computer do its thing. They're gonna be setting several things up, so most of the stuff here from here on is automated. I th we should be able to select our own computer name and all that stuff, so. When you see this window here that it says getting critical updates, it's installing most of the updates you need in order to run Windows, basically, like basic Windows. So we'll be back once we get to do anything. All right, so after another reboot, you get this, these two options. Who owns this computer? Your organization or you own it? If it's your personal computer, you want to click on I own it. But if you're going to be using this for your, or you on your work, for your work, you're going to click on my organization. But because this is at home, I own it. Click next. Here you're going to make a Microsoft account. You can make a Microsoft if, if you want, a Microsoft account if you want. Or if you already have one, you sign in here. If you don't have an account, you can create one just by clicking here. And it does access the internet. You do need the internet for this. And here you just put in your first name, last name, make your own little email address, select a password, where are you from, birth month, day, and year, and you should have your own your own account after this. So we go back because we're going to create a local account. You can just go down here, skip this step, and who's going to use this PC? Alex, because that's my name. We click next, and you could have put a password if you wanted. You know me, I don't like passwords. I'm not good with passwords, so no passwords. And that's how quickly you are in. So it's just going to install several apps, several things. I'll see you on the home screen. Did I say home screen? I meant desktop. Anyway, here we are in our desktop for Windows 10 with the Windows 10 stock wallpaper. And I know the resolution is really, really terrible, but I'm going to show you right now how to fix that. So what we're going to do is just click on, not really click on, but tap command option, and that releases the Mac cursor. After we release the Mac cursor, we go to the top and look for our taskbar, go to actions, install parallels tools, and we click on that. Another way to do it is to, of course, go down to your dock, right click on the Windows 10 window here, and again, actions, and you should be able to install parallels tools there. It's not letting me because there's a dialog box up here. So we're gonna click continue and I'll show you that again. Just go down to your dock, right click Windows 10, go to actions, and as you can see here, I can install parallels tools. Now, what we're gonna do is locate our parallels tools. Let me just hide this cursor over here somewhere. Because, uh, there we go. We're gonna click here on our file. You can also navigate to the file by going to the little windows and file explorer and you'll get this window here. We're going to click on this PC, DVD drive, parallels tools, select yes and it begins to install parallels tools and I'll also show you how to install updates in Windows 10 once this installation is complete. Okay so here we are back in our desktop. We're going to go down to our windows flag. Once we go to our Windows flag, we click Settings. Once in Settings, we click on Update and Security. If you look down here, you see Windows isn't activated. Activate Windows Now. This is the window where you would activate Windows and change your product key. That's where you would install your product key. And for some reason, the product key does not work. Well, because I didn't put any product key in. So this is where I would change my product key and put one that works. Now that we're here, we can actually go up just a little bit to the very top and we can see Windows Update. Click here and this is where it downloads and installs all the updates and you can see there's many updates waiting to be installed. And that's how you install updates Windows 10. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully this tutorial was of any use to you. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I will try to answer them as best I can. And if I can't, you may want to seek professional help either by someone that knows Windows more than I do, or by just looking online. Thank you all for watching again. See you in the next one.